You can't send average people to the. It's not. It's not like buy tickets and go see a convention. Well, she wants to find a dwarf to marry. And I'm like, this would be the perfect place, dude. Do you know what Mark would do if you said, hey, uh, just send a couple average people, a couple tall babes over to LPA. Uh, I was like, you'll have one on each leg just walking around. I swear to God. And she was like, oh, my God, really? And she almost like, I don't know. She's like, uh, uh. She, like, you know, like she, yeah. re- she's going to do it. She, She's she going to go to an LPA convention and find a dwarf to marry. She already Googled about him. Oh, I'm sure And she bought did. her plane ticket. Absolutely. She's ready to go. You just you just threw that convention a freaking rock I in threw, a leg. I threw them a giant is what I threw no, them No, you threw them a T-bone. <laughs> you threw them a T-bone. Are you... I can uh, the outcome of this. I Where else am I you. supposed to send her? I don't know. Tell her go online, <laughs> I, go on a dating site. Yeah, little little midgy, little midgy. It's Mingle. called little midgy. No, you Mingle. know what I heard someone call it? What? Like instead of bumble, it's thumble. <laughs> thumble. No, no, no. You're that's hilarious, dude. It's already thumble. been used. I just thought it was funny. All right. Cool. Well, uh, what about you? What What has your weekend been like? Anything uh, exciting? I've been doing yoga okay. every day. Damn, dude! Even so yoga today, is the big thing for you. It's the big thing for me, dude. Damn. I wake up early. I did. I was at a six fifteen a.m. class today. I'm loving it. You so, how long does it take you to when you drive out here from OC to from LA? OC? Hour, hour and a half. Okay. Yeah, hour and a half usually. Yeah. Sucks. Our guest today, he. Uh, Where's he coming he, from? He's coming from San Diego. Oh, wow. And he called me. He, like, texted me a couple times and said, dude, I don't know what this traffic's about. He's even running late. Okay. And he left, like, 8 a.m. San Diego time. Well, he's going to get a spanking. Oh, is he? Yeah, from for, you. From, for being tardy? <laughs> <laughs> for being naughty and tardy. <laughs> naughty and tardy. <laughs> so good. All right. Oh, no. We, me and my wife, are, he's not here yet. Is he? No. Okay. Me and my wife were talking about it. And I was like thinking, I'm like, who would play Wee Man in, a, in his biopic? If they did a biopic, who would play you? Who would you want to play you? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Gary know. Oldman? <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty good. Uh, we were th- saying Peter Dinklage is definitely going to play you. He's yeah. gonna do like that. They're gonna do like scenes from Jackass, where Preston is just on top of him. And who would play Preston? I don't know. Yeah, because before it could have been uh, what's his name, Zach. Yeah. No, not Zach. The I don't dude know. who passed away, the gnarly actor dude. He was in everything. Oh, oh, Chris Farley. Chris Farley uh, would have played. Chris Preston. Farley's way older than Preston. Yeah, right? I know, but he would have played. They Preston. figured out a way to like yeah. make him young. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been good. Would have been awesome. <laughs> that would be a good matchup. Uh, That's when Chris it's- Farley and Peter Dinklage <laughs> hanging out together. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. I would love to see that. Uh, so, but you know what? Let's bring out our guest. Uh, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm excited. You ready? Are you gonna give a give a little monologue of who this guy is? Yeah. Or are we just going for it? I'm gonna give a monologue. Ah, uh, cool. This guy is pretty much one of the legends of skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Part of the Bones Brigade. And he is, he flies in the sky. Oh, yeah. Yep. And uh, he's the man. The first to ever do a 900. In a contest. In a contest. In 1999. In 1999. Mm, So long ago, dude. This dude has done so much. We can't even believe he's here on our show. I'm so excited. Punch, I know you're excited. I'm very excited, dude. I'm like, I can't hold it in. Let's bring him out. (laughs) The man, the myth, the legend, Tony Hawk. Woo! Woo! (laughs) Yeah. Hey, Tony. Good to see see you, buddy. Nice. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. So stoked uh, to have you. First first skateboarder. Yeah. Well, no, Greg. We had Greg. Yeah. But uh, first legend skateboarder. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. 
No, absolutely. No, Greg's legend I, too. I have a feeling. Oh, well, you guys are legendary, so I have a feeling. And skaters. Um, I'm gonna put this little closer. Okay, to you, I have yeah. a feeling you guys are gonna have many more skaters. Yeah. Oh yeah. We when we when we did this, like one of the things that we wanted to do was it have all different walks of life come on that have either like touched our lives in some way or that other people's lives, not just skateboarders. Mm -hmm. So we ha we usually have like comedians or like actors or we had a lady that that did a dog rescue like that's doing it right now that's having oh, that's sweet. trying to get help and so we're, we're trying to like interview all different but but you were part of the the dream cast absolutely oh, yeah, for sure we wrote a dream list and yeah. we were on the top <laughs> and uh i was like i've done things with tony and i've also missed things with tony that i was invited to and i'm like we have to have him on yeah great thing so I think the band's playing next door. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem conducive to podcasting. No. no. Unless you just bring them on and just become part of the show by default. Yeah. So what have you been up to lately? Like what's, it's 2023. We've yeah. gone through COVID. Everybody's back to normal. What has Tony been up to? <laughs> uh, well, I, I had a bad run from an injury. Um, so I broke my leg in March 2022. Okay, and then uh, started skating way too soon um, because I only heard what I wanted to from the doctors. <laughs> I think so we all do that. It's my, yeah, it's definitely on me. But but also through my life, I kind of did that, and I always got back to it. Yeah, but you know, I, I didn't accept the fact that I broke the, the biggest bone in my body, and that it's not going to heal in six weeks. <laughs> that was, was, I, that I, was, I was in full denial of that. What's that? Was that the femur? My femur, yeah, um, compound fracture and. And then they put all this hardware in there. Uh, so I got, I went and started skating. And pretty early on in my trying to get back to skating, I felt the bone shift. Mm. Like I literally felt it. I popped out on the deck on yeah. the mini ramp. Yep. And when I, st I, I instinctively went to this leg, my, my bad leg, and I felt like I just knew it right then. I was like, I just blew it. I did something. Like something's wrong. But then I kept skating with this bone that was like misplaced. Oh, crap. so it was basically like offset. Yeah, for about five months, and then at some point, I said, "Like it hurts all the time. My skating's not progressing. I feel like <laughs> something's really wrong here." Yeah, I got X-rays, and it showed that my bone had it was disconnected. Still, mm. um, I, I was watching your progression from when you slammed to going to the doctor uh, to. I seriously think it was one week that oh, you're like no, it was it was it was, it was a couple weeks, but definitely weeks. it was way too soon. It yeah, where you're like I, I need to just roll, I gotta roll, and I, I'm yeah. like I'm like whoa, this guy's rolling way too early. Yeah, how, yeah. how long did it take you to recover when you I, broke your femur? So I broke mine uh, October third, twenty twenty or two thousand five, and we'd already signed contracts. To start filming Jackass 2 January of twenty of two thousand six. And Tremaine <laughs> came to the hospital. Oh, yes. I mean, that's funny because if, if I had that timeline back then, I'd be like, dude, I'm no so, problem. Yeah, no, I'm surprised I you weren't in crutches like no. filming Jackass. I, I seriously like Tremaine came to the hospital and looks at me and goes, dude. You broke this on the smallest window of opportunity that you could still come back and film the movie. And I go, yeah, I go, don't worry, Jeff. I'm going straight to physical therapy. I'm going to be good. And I, I didn't do nothing but rest and heal it and go to physical therapy because I was like, my ass is Jeff already has when me. you When you end up shooting, were you limited at all? No, I wasn't. But the first thing we went and shot, I was kind of bummed at. We went to Oregon, and Aaron built this mini loop. Oh yeah, for yeah, for motorcycles like, for oh, little God. fifty motorcycles. <laughs> and it was like the first day, and Jeff's like, he, he goes, "I want you to do it, but I'm kind of iffy." <laughs> dude, and I and don't I, do it. Yeah, don't and I do just it. sat there on the side, and I'm like, "Dude, this was like made for me," and I was bummed. But after that, we I just we killed it. We just went full gung ho. Yeah. Well, that, but, that, it was crucial what you said. I didn't do anything for it. You, you didn't do anything yeah. for a couple months. Yeah. Kevin Staub, coincidentally, broke his leg four months after me, uh -huh. but higher up in, in a more complicated way. Yep. 
he didn't do anything for two or three months, he was skating better than me immediately. Mm. So I took yeah, that as like, with okay, everybody. maybe I should have gone that route. <laughs> yeah. But to finish my story, I ended up having um, what they call non-union. I had surgery on it again yeah. to realign it. And then the doctor was like, I'm going to get your legs straight, but you, you got to do nothing. In fact, I'm going to make you use crutches for two months. Yeah. Like, even though I could walk or use a cane, he's like, no, I want them to get in your way. So you have to be slow. And then he was right. I mean, I, I, I went to him last week. So now I'm, uh, I am 10 months out from that. Okay. I went to him last week and, yep. and got x-rays bone solid and he's like you graduated you're good see ya nice. damn that's did, great man when that's good news when you first did it did they put a titanium rod in you or yeah. did okay but this guy so, put a bigger one in <laughs> so with the rod it's with still the rod, shifted yeah well the the mistake was someone told me i'm not gonna name names someone told me your leg's never gonna be stronger and i was like okay <laughs> but here i go yeah so. it's it's the old tell me not to do it i'm gonna do it routine yeah, hey, yeah. Tony, do, do you have any residual effects from yours no and i still have it in and the doctor said it's fine to be in unless i feel pain or anything yeah and i've shot three movies skated I think you're good yeah i'm i'm fine <laughs> i'm graduated reading. yeah no. <laughs> so uh, yeah. is that the only i mean you've probably broken a lot of bones throughout your um life. not as many as people think i broke my elbow uh i fractured my skull with um with <laughs> yeah fractured on, your on that skull day yeah it uh was not, i yeah i broke my that. thumb what, what was that from and broke a couple ribs oh yeah ribs. when we he shot wild boys in night wild boys yeah i blew it damn man looped i made up. a bad choice that day. looped out <laughs> that yeah. sounds and, like a, and no a, we seriously where it when we were filming was like we just killed Tony Hawk. Like the world. It was is, my the, choice. The world <laughs> is about to hate us. <laughs> when people are doing like, like when you're having Tony come on, does he have, do you have to sign something like a waiver? Well, obviously. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. It yeah. was, it was still like, those were still kind of the lawless days. We definitely had waivers. Yeah. But it was, it everyone was, everything was pretty renegade. And, as as is Jackass and Wild Boys, obviously you guys yeah. got to get the footage and then and then try to get, you know, like <laughs> then ask, bring the lawyers, ask forgiveness, <laughs> not permission. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, there was a thing about that, and you know, I don't know how far you want to go into it, but but that day, I don't know if I ever told you this, when I went to the hospital, um, and then I was I was in the hospital, a sheriff came, and oh, he's like, crap. okay, and he's like, did anyone try to get you to do something you were not comfortable with? Wow. Like, did someone force you into this, basically? Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm. You guys. Like, the yeah. production. I was like, <laughs> no, this is what I do for a living. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I choose my destiny. Wow. Here I am. Like, I, I fucked around and found out. That's yeah. my fault. Jason made me do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but what's crazy is, so this was at Bob Burnquist's house, yeah. and all his stuff's outside, so there's a lot of natural stuff that changed it for Tony, where he was out doing the bit... But, uh, the Huck Jam. The Huck Jam, where he's on this machine made loop. Yeah, we've doing been doing like we perfectly. The, the crazy thing was, we came off a tour, thirty dates, right? Yeah. Doing that loop every night. I flew home from the last date, a day early. I was gonna. I, we ended in. I think our last demo was in Fort Lauderdale. We were gonna be in Miami for a couple of days, and you guys invited me to do Wild Boys, and yeah. I was like, oh, I'm gonna fly home to Wild Boys. Yeah. So I had just done the loop two nights prior. Yeah, came there and then we're like Bob and I are like, let's do the loop. Yeah, but his loop was rugged. So they came from a machine perfectly made loop to Bob's. That twelve o'clock of the loop was, was pretty like much oval. one o'clock. Yeah. yeah, and it was oval. But also and, the the thing that that tripped me up <laughs> literally <laughs> was uh, the starting ramp. Yeah, because his starting ramp was all weathered, so we didn't get the right amount of speed mm. going into it. Yeah, and there's a there's a certain like perfect speed that you have for the loop. And so my mistake, and it's like the most amateur thing I could have possibly done or beginner thing I could have done was to try to, to compensate for that by pumping the loop. You don't pump the loop. <laughs> you don't Rule pump number the loop. One, you do yeah. not pump it. It's how I teach everyone to do it. <laughs> like you, you go to the loop and you just hold it. Yeah. You hold it like a carve. Yeah. That's what you do. You don't you don't pump it. And once you pump, you got no more legs. So you don't use the G forces at all. Yeah. And then it's fucking stupid me, like, oh I don't have enough speed. Let me pump. And then all of a sudden I'm just spinning through the air. Gnarliest one of the gnarliest slams did, I've did ever Bob, seen. Did Bob 
Burnquist ever do that loop switch? Yeah, he did it. There was footage of him doing it. He did it with a gap. Yeah. That's fucking gnarly. But that's why it was so janky because he had cut a gap in it and then put the gap back in. And then that's what we're skating. So we're skating like mousetrap loop. (laughs) It was bad. I don't know if you were there still or if it happened before. You you may have uh, been taken off in the ambulance, but we kept filming. Yeah. And Bob goes, hey, we man. Let's let's drop in on the mini ramp. Oh no no! Then, I was there. I saw that happen. And go into the rocked. big ramp. Yeah. yeah. What? So Bob <laughs> had a vert ramp that like waterfalled your your know, mini ramp that waterfalled into a big vert ramp, and he goes drop in and let's carve you know the um, the big ramp together. I'm like all right, yeah, it's Bob, and no pads, nothing. Drop in and the waterfall is steep. Yeah, it's almost like, like just a straight uh, drop, and. I probably did the pump thing where I thought I was going to pump, but instead it flew out. I landed. I was knocked out. Damn. And Bob carved around the the yeah, waterfall. I, that happened to before ride I it. So all yeah. in all, they got some pretty good footage that day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm on the ground, and I, I, I'm coming to, and I hear Steve-O going, I think he's knocked out. I oh think he's gosh. knocked out. Did they have that yeah. footage? I don't think anybody was filming. Yeah, oh, I, I okay. didn't. You guys were just kind of warming up. Yeah, but I remember watching you try to get up three times, and that one I was like, "Oh, he's KO'd." Like, "Oh, this is bad." Oh wow! And so then, you did see it. I, I, did I didn't see even then, know. I had no clue. And then I was just trying to be like you after that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Tony, when when the the mega ramp stuff started happening, like who who was kind of who came up with all that stuff? Was that was that you? Was that Danny Way? Was no, that not Bob me? It was kind of a combination. Danny was the one who definitely took the uh, took the movement to a higher level. Oh yeah, with the Great Wall um, of China. The, yeah. the first the first person who ever did it though, and he deserves credit for it, was Andy McDonald. Really, Andy McDonald was, made a big gap, and then he kept moving the gap further away from itself. I think he was it was in Michigan, like at his parents' house, and so he kept having to build. He kept trying to see how far he could go. And then they kept having to build on to the starting ramp. Yeah. So just they're just doing that for a weekend. Well, let's move it another six feet away. <laughs> oh, I need to go higher. And that was the drop in, like basically what you guys are talking about—the so, waterfall kind of drop in. Uh, no, I mean, ramp it's, for, no, it's not. A waterfall is when when it goes flat and then it goes down Jesus. like this. It, it's just a it's just a starting ramp. Okay. Right? It's like a so, ski jump ramp. It's like a ski it's, jump ramp. Yeah. Yeah. But then, so Annie did that, and then Danny. I took that model and then said, well, we got to go into a giant quarter pipe. And mm. that's, that was the game changer. Cause everyone's like, dude, uh, why would you want a quarter pipe? <laughs> like a 20 foot quarter pipe. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, and then he started blasting these airs and, and figuring out that he could spin further. And that was the game changer. That was like adding a Matt Hoffman ring, <laughs> uh, on the backside. What's that? That, that was remember. When yeah, yeah. Well, that? I, 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 and I should I should backtrack for skateboarding. Yeah. Matt Hoffman is the originator of the Big Air. Yeah, he built a twenty foot quarter pipe. Yeah, got towed in on a motorcycle, <laughs> and would just flat lined. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, he broke. He for, did the first Big Air, for yeah. the biggest air. Yeah. Whatever it was, I don't know, fifteen feet or something. I think so. And then he's like, I got to go twenty, so he's trying to go 20 feet he has no gauge of how much speed he needs he's getting towed by motorcycle across dirt right and then he hits a quarter pipe and pulled out too far like landed flat bottom and then was flatlining and then got taken to hospital so uh matt hoffman is the og he is yeah and he's one of the gnarliest dudes. I feel like with that, with that, with the mega ramp, when people were figuring out like that, they could go higher and spin quicker, like what or or, or further, like you're yeah. saying, that would have definitely made when you when you did the 900 a lot easier because it, um, it, when you did the 900, it looked like you were like searching for speed. Like yeah, if you had yeah. That- I, yes and no. I think and and a lot of people say that where they're like, well, he did 900 on a big ramp, so that's not the same. And I'm like, it, let me tell you. When you're on a 28 foot ramp, 10 to 20 feet above it, Jesus, dude, that, so many things can go wrong. The smallest adjustment can be tragic. So, I don't think it's any easier. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it, in in some ways it's gnarlier. Sure, it gives you that airtime, but you still got to land 
right. Yeah, like that that what that that <clears throat> slam that Jake Brown took on that. I mean, I, that? I think that that, that was, was gnarly. That was the turning point for the whole mega movement because up to that point, no one had any kind of accident like that, and they kept pushing it further and further. Like how higher and bigger ramps and let's wow. add this stuff and that then, is and gnarly then when, that, when jake that was a reality check for a lot of us so is that how tall the the the, 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 the quarter pipe is 28 foot tall that one was 28 oh my at, God. at the x games the ones that you see like at elliot's ramp that one's 20 yeah um general vert ramps are 13 yep mm. so when you when you when you're looking at a 30 foot ramp or a 28 foot ramp the amount of speed you need to get just to get in the air is twice as much as we've ever had. You know what I mean? The whole thing is just like it's just, it's just absurd the it's the it's like a skateboarder and, like became uh, evil risk. Knievel. Like that's kind of like what yeah. it looks like in the X game, you know? Like with the people yeah. cheering. I dabbled. And stuff. I mean I I I I got my highest errors in, on that thing and you know I jumped I jumped a couple of the big gaps and I was like that was fun. <laughs> what was like, what is the highest air? On the mega quarter pipe, I'm not, I, I know Danny. Danny did. It, I think it was close to twenty, eighteen, or something. Okay. I, don't, I don't have the exact number, but um, you, it's when when you go that high. Like if you're a vert skater and you're a veteran vert skater, suddenly the coping is so much further away than you've ever seen it. Yeah, that you you totally question all of your experience and and you your judgment of where you should land. So I would That's, say like the first 10 errors that I even tried, I just bailed. Even though I was in the good position and doing yeah. right, I was just like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Don't. You're, you're like holding off for way longer. Like yeah. It, and the, the funny thing is, not funny thing, but, but my sort of cheat to that is I started doing 540s on the quarter pipe. Only so I didn't have to look at the coping. <laughs> like, that's true. Because I knew I had the snap. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm looking up at the sky on, on the highest point of it. So yeah. when I'm coming down, I'm closer to like eight or 10 feet. Yeah. And, th and I know that landing. Yeah. Right. But that was my way of getting around it. That makes sense. <laughs> that's insane. That's a whole nother ramp. You're higher above on the yeah, ramp. Double, double the double the, yeah. yeah. That's insane. So do you have to kind of change like the, like the, sh like what you're like the board that you're riding and like yeah, it's bigger got, board, bigger wheels. Yeah. Most bigger people trucks. do. I mean, some people are starting to get used to their regular setup, but, um, I have a, I have a mega board with two fifteens, the hardest bushings. I have them cranked all the way down. And when I hit the quarter pipe, I, I usually get speed wobbles right near the coping. Damn. So that, those, that ship has sailed. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just sticking on a stay on my ramp now. <laughs> <clears throat> Might as well. There, you know, skating has changed drastically lately. Yeah, with where it's at, with what the kids are doing, and at what at, age, at, at what, what genders? Age. Yes, it's, girl, uh, it's ten-year-old girls, yeah. five forties. You know, oh more. She's now she's doing fakey to fakey five forties. <laughs> she learned that. She learned the other day, and I said. You know, you're talking about Reese Nelson. Um, I, I'm, I'm talking yeah, about Reese Nelson. Yeah. She's 10 years old. She did a fakie to fakie 540 the other day, and uh, which, from a vert skater's perspective, is kind of harder than a 720. Okay. Um, because you you let, you go up backwards and you land backwards. Yeah. Mm. 720, you, you go up backwards and you land forwards. Got it. And I told her, I said, you know, Reese, like, I learned 720s in 1985. I didn't learn fakie to fakies until, like, 1992. Yeah. And she's like, they're fine. Like, it's just, <laughs> she's so matter of fact. She's like, yeah. I go, well, I think you learned something. She's like, I will. <laughs> it's she's 10. It's, I started skating when I was 10. Yeah. And she's doing fakie to fakie five fours yeah. at 10. <laughs> I mean, it, it, does, she skate for, does she skate for Birdhouse? Yeah, she does. Yeah. You have the most uh, crazy, I'm trying to think of the word to say. You have the most um, versatile, uh, versatile team. Oh, yeah. You do. Out yeah. of that's what teams. one of the things that Greg Carroll was mentioning. He's when when he started things skateboards, he wanted a, a team that could skate everything. Yeah, gotcha. me and, too. And, and that's what you have, yeah. it's, which is great. I, I just mm -hmm. I took cues from Stacy of how he put together a skate team for the Bones Brigade, and he had everyone was everyone had their strengths, but they all were down to skate whatever too. And and yeah. I feel like that's one thing that kind of is, is unspoken about being a pro skater is like, you're expected to just go and ride. Yeah. You that, know, if, if you're going to do it in a, on a public, in a public way, 
Well, I remember like uh, think like it, it got to a point where like uh, they started sponsoring a lot of kids that just skated street. But right. when they took them to demos, which were like in Oregon or something, where it's just yep. like bowls and like <laughs> bigger things, they 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 couldn't be in the demo because that just wasn't their thing. So they kind of like were like, okay, this is why we yeah. always had a versatile team. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, well, in in our day, Bones Brigade days. It, it, skate parks were a few and far between oh i know and i so know I you go know. to a you go to a skate shop and it's like well we put up a couple jump ramps for you and it's like <laughs> that's what we got yeah the dad, and then yeah. if you if you're like a prima donna and you're just like i'm not skating that the kids are like what the fuck it's all we have yeah. <laughs> the dad brought the on the street brought the pvc uh, flat oh, yeah, bar yeah. for you the, the, the double the double <laughs> wide double pvc yeah, yeah. Those I feel the like days. there was a point in skateboarding where like vert was kind of slowing down. Yeah, but you vert died. You, were you always a street skater before vert? Because no, uh, I, it's tricky because we might. Uh, you know, I started skating in seventy eight, basically, and so the act of street skating was not a thing yet. Street skating just meant like going on the street to get to where you're going to is transportation sidewalk surfing kind sidewalk of surfing yeah no one understood no one even knew how to ollie off the ground yet so no one was jumping down stairs or doing handrails or ledges or anything like that you know and then as as freestyle evolved as rodney figured out how to ollie how oh my to god flip, then parks started closing because it was it was the the era of cement parks concrete parks pools Parks started closing. Then people were like, well, the streets are the skate park now. And then that's when they figured out how to street skate. I was in that movement a bit, but my roots were steeped in in vertical. Yeah. From pools. So I I was always tethered to ramps. Um, but, I, but it was like, I said street skate by default. So I would say like the era of 92, 95, I did my best. I wasn't moving the needle. And then my ankle started giving out. Like they just kept rolling, and so I was just. I like, feel I'm like going back you were moving. Lane. Like, like I feel like you were keeping up though, because your skate, your oh, street skate it. footage was really, really good. Thank you. Like, thank you. Um, you know, I did what I could, but it was more. I was, I was also just down to get. It was more like I was trying to go on missions with the team, because yeah. we had we had such a tight crew. We had, uh, you know, Jeremy Klein, Willie Santos. Uh, Steve Barra and, and so and Heath and so we were just like I'm getting in the, I'm driving we're going to street spot I'll do what I can <laughs> Willie too you know that was those are the, those were you, those are fun days man you had some legends back then too yeah. those dudes took street skating and skating in general to other levels well you said Willie you it, Willie Santos Willie Santos yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> dude he Heath was her chart yeah. Heath yeah yeah <clears throat> dude, well, does Heath when he was an amateur yeah. Jesus. He sent me what I would consider the heaviest sponsor me tape. That's what that I was going to ask. Ever seen. You're like, what? what well, he, yeah, yeah, I, just he, show, I showed Urchart? everyone at the office. You know, we had two employees, yeah. but. Wow. I showed Jeremy Klein, everyone, and they're just like, what? That kid's crazy. Yeah. And like, just gnarly slams, too. Like going on double kink, uh, locking up on the kink, and then just ejecting oh. to his, to like Scorpion. <laughs> That was in the sponsor me video. <clears throat> so he was on the team. <laughs> You're on the team and we're yeah. putting this video <laughs> I did, out. I used, I used it in uh, our second video, Birdhouse video. I yeah. used a lot of his sponsor me footage. Wow. <laughs> was his sponsor me footage? That wasn't when him and Jeremy Klein no. were driving around. And, that was, that, that okay. came when he was on the team officially and turning pro and. Damn. And then he and that Jeremy were video. destroying America. That's what I was oh, going to yeah, ask him. Like, you must have got some crazy sponsor me videos. And yeah, Heath Kirchhardt's Heath, sponsor yep. me video. That alone. Holy yeah. shit. Let's take a sidestep. Like, being on the road, skating, tour, yep. you're on tour. We've, we've all been across this country. We know what it's like. We know what's showing up to uh, Bill's skate shop in, yeah. in some place. And you're like... All right, what are we skating? What are we skating? And <laughs> will you give us some money so we can get to the next city? Yeah. <laughs> that was but, the worst. But then, of course, all the dudes want to go out that night course, and yeah. hang out. Is there any time period that you remember that you're like, holy crap, I can't believe this happened. With like, It was this team. We're out here, and this happened. That you can, that you can share. 
Because there is, we all have stories that we're like, no, that's in the vault forever. Oh, man. <laughs> there, there was one tour where just these these things kept happening where it was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> we, we were driving through Canada. We went, I remember we were in Kamloops, went to go see a movie. Yeah. Everyone knew we were in town. Well, whatever. The skaters knew we were in town. Of course. They broke into our van, took everything in the van. Oh, no and way. Then, so everyone That's lost, happened to us before. You know, they yeah. uh, lost their, their CDs, their wallets, their whatever. It was all gone. Yeah. And then we, we roll into Vancouver, and we roll into the town as a riot is happening. What? So we check into the hotel, <laughs> check in the hotel, and as soon as we check in the hotel, the cops come and block the street, and then we watch a riot from, from the hotel room in the window. No and We way. can't leave. Yeah. Just stuff like that where it was just like, what is, how are we even part of this scene? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say that uh, with, hmm, I had, a, I had a story there. I'll try to think of that. With Oh, I remember one. Okay, so one town, I won't name names, but yep. <clears throat> one town, we, we you know, we're, we're, we're not, our schedule is not defined. Of course. Like, we just have to be, we just have to be at, at certain skate shops on certain days around a certain time. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I drive until I just get tired. And then we pull over into a city and we were in like Springfield, Missouri or something. <laughs> <clears throat> and there's a convention in town. There were no hotel rooms mm. and there's six of us. Oh damn. There's six of us in the van. Yeah. And so I go, I go to the Hyatt. We cannot afford the Hyatt. You know <laughs> what I mean? Course. Yeah. But I go, do you have any rooms? They have, we have one room with a king bed. And I was like, I'll take Gotta it. take it, yeah. So, six dudes, <laughs> one king bed, <clears throat> and then they go out, right? I was so I pulled I pulled the mattress off the box springs, put it next to it, so that I could have the box springs. Yeah, I just knew people were going to be coming in and whatever, you know. Yeah, barging on the bed. Yep. And then they all go out. They come back. One of the dudes brings a girl back. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Like, what is wrong? That sounds that sounds normal, dude. And, yeah. I mean, she wasn't in danger, but it was just like, what? How? Like, ha, have some tact. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and so they sleep in the like it's it's just a regular sized room. Yeah. They sleep in where the little area is right before the bathroom. <laughs> hallway. The so, yeah, kind of the hallway. The kind of hallway yeah, yeah, where yeah. where you know if you look this way, there's the clo <laughs> the so called closet. <laughs> And then we have to step over them to go to the bathroom. That's, it was uh, absurd. Jesus, and that, I, was, I was like, "This, this is like, this is the dumbest." That's awesome. <laughs> like that's a, I, I, I do these uh, horror conventions now, and they set, and you go there, they set you up with the room, they give you the per diem, and then you you do signings and stuff. But I was just recently doing one, and I was in the room, and it was this nice room, and I'm, and I was thinking like, back in my skateboard days. It would be all of us in this room. Like this room would oh, be like in yeah. every crevice of the room, someone would be sleeping or have a chick there. Or uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's just yeah. how it was, dude. I mean, it was normal. Yeah, it was like. No <laughs> so I mean, good. we you know that's that, but that's we had to work with what we had. Yeah, uh, the, but also all that chaos and all the ridiculousness. Like it, it, I look back on it fondly. Like for sure, it was a struggle financially. But those were some of the best of times, dude. They, and yeah. I, I feel like those times, like like having to do that, brings you closer together. Like oh, you're learning sure. you everything snore. about yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. Poncho yeah. snores. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks when there's there's some there's some bad seed that gets planted yeah. like in on a drive, and then there's two people that are just at odds. Oh yeah, like that is yep. the worst. There was one Definitely dude with us, times. and I'm not gonna mention his name, but like. He was infamous for just like coming on tour with a backpack and just a shirt on his back. Yeah. So he would just kind of wash it in the <laughs> sink, you know, just he kept it light, but he always smelled. So I was like, dude, please. Like no one wanted to share the room with him. You know? uh, yeah. Yeah. There's that too. Cause everyone, I mean, even on the Bones Brigade days when they had money, we all had to share rooms. <laughs> no, absolutely. That that's. I'm sleeping with Sean tonight, or yeah. I call dibs with Danny tonight. Yeah. Like, you're like, I was always oh my I was God. In, a, in a room with Tommy because we were like roughly the same age and had the same taste in music, and we both uh, liked to party a little bit, and everyone else was just kind of doing their own thing. So Tommy and I were tight. That's awesome. Are you guys still tight? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you go through periods where you don't 
see each other at all and you're just right back into oh no that's correct like that's how i feel too like with friends like from skateboarding days like especially teammates like picked up where you left off yeah exactly it's like you never like left each other tommy and i lived together for the most part um in north hollywood when we shot uh leave me the cube i was oh my god (laughs) oh dang i was just recently watching that movie and i was gonna ask you (laughs) you did a you probably you did a lot of stunts for a bunch of different movies weren't you in like Um, uh police academy too Police Academy 4. Oh, okay. I was David Spade's stunt double <laughs> yeah. for a little bit, and then at some point they realized that I was too tall to yeah. be a stunt level. <laughs> I love <laughs> They sent me home. They yeah. sent me home quietly, <laughs> yeah. and then they sent Chris Miller in my place. No. they're like, So you if you watch to- the movie, <laughs> David Spade is goofy-footed, um, and then when I'm doing his stunts, I'm goofy-footed, and then when Chris Miller's doing his stunts, he's regular-footed. Oh, my God. I didn't That's even notice. That was funny. Switch Dance back then, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But they're like, yeah, we, we got enough footage, Tony. Thanks. See you later. And then Chris calls you. Yeah. Hey, Tony, I'm working on Police Academy 4. You wouldn't believe it, dude. It was, more like, it was more like, yeah, you're going home uh, tomorrow. <laughs> you're going to go home tomorrow. And I was like, what? what? No, everyone else is going home? <laughs> like, no, we're here. we still got some stuff to do. And then next thing I know, Chris Miller's there. And I was like, I get it. All right. Yeah. Um, speaking of rooming up with people, uh, when we first started filming for Jackass, and we'd go out and shoot like on the road. Everybody had to room up with somebody, and they always put Preston and I together. Mm. <laughs> and one time, Preston went out, and he's like, "Dude, I'm leaving. I'm going back to the room, man. Like, I gotta go." I'm like, "All right, see you later, bro. Like, we're all out and having fun." And I come back, and he can hear me coming into the room, and he's like, "No, no, no!" <laughs> he had horrible diarrhea. <laughs> Oh. And he was throwing up at the same <laughs> time. That's some dysentery. Oh, something. yeah. He was coming out of both ends. And he's like, you didn't bring somebody back, did you? And I'm like, no, I'm coming back. So. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing worse than like that. Than the what have you had? What? What have you had? I don't know. Oh, what have I had? Yeah. I would have I straight went and got my own room. Yeah, yeah. I would have been like, yeah. okay, this is yours. Room. Bye. Yeah. See, <laughs> that would be tactful. Yeah. That would be respectful. Yeah, I'd be like, we, I, I wasn't, in, I wasn't experiencing <laughs> that kind of respect when we were on tour. <laughs> it was bad. What were we gonna say, Punch? I said, yeah. There's nothing like, like shittier than like sharing a room with someone and they bring back a girl and they're like in the same bed with you. Like, oh god, <laughs> you're hearing like <laughs> licky noises and stuff. <laughs> Just, you're like, and you don't want to turn. You don't want to turn. You're just like, it is. It's just disrespectful yeah. to, to obviously it, to the girl. Firstly, yeah. Is and that, everyone else. Is that considered a threesome, though, still? Because you're ah. in the bed. I think it's like a, a yeah, but you're not. You're, you're just, not touching. Yeah, you're not. You're just, like, creeped <laughs> out, dude. Like, <laughs> isn't that, isn't that, was it the word cuckold? Isn't that, like, that that's cuckold? what it was. Wait, wait, what's it called? <laughs> what's it called? You're like a cuckold that's not staring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've had many sponsors. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm, yes. and and talking yeah. even outside of skateboarding yeah. sponsors, what's been your favorite? Like one, and it doesn't even. I mean, obviously, Birdhouse, like you know your brand. Uh, but even outside of Birdhouse, like one that you're like, man, I can't believe this was my sponsor. And what was like, I can't believe I let that be my sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> ah, take your pick. Um, no, I, I actually. Uh, I mean, I. It's it's it was tricky to navigate when I started getting bigger endorsements because people were very quick to call sellout and it was like mm. I get your point but you know I have been doing this for most of my life yep with sometimes to a uh, to a uh, great success sometimes not at all yeah and trying to trying to provide for family trying to you know what I mean and it's just like I think I think the probably the the first one that people thought was like a mcdonald's like you're the ultimate salad i was like dude i have been eating mcdonald's my whole life yeah still do okay you know what i yep. mean they want to pay me sign me up yeah like that was to me that was amazing I, kind of one of my favorites wow you know okay. what i mean like yeah. just because it was like this is how how crazy it's gotten yeah that mcdonald's that i can have an endorsement like that and and that, that's on the likes uh, that's Within the same realm of huge uh, other sports, uh, huge sports stars. Yeah. Mainstream sports stars. Totally. 
<clears throat> you know what I mean? Like that was crazy to me. So I yeah. feel like that was sort of a coming of age. Um, I had, uh, I will tell you, I had the most challenges with Club Med. I didn't even know you were with Club was, Med. I what was. is what is Club Med? Club that, Med is a is a vacation um, cruises, resort. different things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, back then it was. Um, well, it was. It's it's tricky. Club Med was originally known to be like the singles resort and uh, it's all inclusive so you pay you pay to be there and then everything's included food mm, lodging drinks got to it extent all that and then they were just known for being like the the sort of swinger place they were rebranding and they were making it like we're a family and and they were redesigning a bunch of um of the club meds and they asked me to go to a couple and so it was like oh free vacation but but the the woman that was in charge was so she was just so um aggressive that it got really hard for me uh, i can't yeah. like it, like she would follow me around i'm not kidding like she'd follow me around x games with a club med sweatshirt like you put this on put this on put this on you're going oh, on camera and i was like dude no that's not that I, yeah that's not how this works let me do it you freelance know what I mean? my way yeah. <laughs> and then i'll never forget she um uh i i did the x games in 99 was sort of my biggest competition i did 900 there I I won the the series um the NSA series that year and I was like that's my that's my out like that was a good kind of ending on a high note for competition yeah so I was like all right I'm I'm done competing like I guess I said it on camera at some point she calls me the next day and she's like we're not sponsoring you anymore I go why well, you're not competing you're not you're not in X Games <laughs> I'm like well yeah but I got other plans I got like I'm gonna do this tour. And videos. I'm still skating. Videos yeah. like you don't have to compete. She's like, "Yeah, but you're not in the X Games. Like it's over." Mm. Wow! <laughs> so I got kicked off Club Med. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of threw yourself off. Anyway, I guess so, yeah. yeah, yeah. But okay, I was gonna ask, did you ever have to do like they're like, okay, we're gonna send you down to Miami at our Club Med there, and you're, we're gonna put a ramp. I did and, that. Yes, I did and you're gonna do it in Miami. Shut up! I did I that. Get, what, you I did a, just you did a demo. I did a demo in a Club Med. <laughs> no way. And, but I'll, I'll tell you how I, how I played it. I, uh, they said, you know, we're going to have a, we have a ramp there because I think they had like an inline school because this okay. is, you know, the days of inline. Like All right. 97, 98-ish. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, and so, but it was a half pipe. So I was like, yeah, sweet. And then, and then they said, okay, well, you can, uh, you know, bring your whole family. So I brought, I literally brought like my siblings, their kids, my kids. Yes. And then they said, do you have any other pro skaters? you know, that you could bring. And, and my friend used to skate vert, could still skate enough. And I was like, yeah, my friend's a pro for sure. So right. he okay. brought his family. Okay. And then all he had to do was like, couple backside airs. Yeah. And that was it. A couple of <laughs> grind, <laughs> little flash he did, he did like, couple backside airs. Uh, <laughs> I think he did maybe, yeah, like rock and roll. And, and his whole family got whole the family. There was, there was probably like 20 of us. That is on a awesome. full, you know, free ride vacation. So yes, to answer your question, that did happen. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I made that up. Like yeah. I was just like, let me yeah. ask it in a certain way. But then they asked me to do it again. <laughs> I think it was like in Thailand or somewhere else. And yeah, and I was just like, I can't. And, and that didn't work with my family. Yeah. So I wasn't going to go on a solo club med <laughs> mission. <laughs> That's insane. No way. <laughs> um. But over the years, yeah, I mean, like it's just it's been it's been wild to to see the rise of skating and and the in the eyes of the of the non skater the legitimization of skating where it's like yeah. it's part of it's part of our culture it's part of it's part of the the vernacular of of, of everything now yeah you know you know what um, I find weird like not weird but I, I think it's 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 really cool like. I feel like skateboarders, like at least like, I don't want to say that we invented it because it was a word that was already there, but we always said gnarly. That's so gnarly or that's, <laughs> that's so sick. <laughs> and now you like, you hear it everywhere. Everyone, yeah. it's like so normal now. And people don't know that I that was like, like Rad, our shit, Rad, bro. Rad is, has roots in skateboarding, right? Huh? Rad? Rad? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course it does. Rad it's for sure. That's so rad. Yeah, man. The the funny thing that I'm I'm amazed about these days is 
when we all started skating, it was seriously the, the outcast. The, the worst, the, like, un, most uncool thing you could do. Yeah, and the cops and, like, and, and it even rose all the way to the early 90s where people would be like, you can't even make money doing that. Oh, and yeah. there's, like, videos like Danny Way's, like, I make more money than, you know, to people. And you're like, yeah, like, it's... it's I used it's, to hide my skateboard uh, in the bushes before school in ninth grade. Yeah. Like go uh, to school. The, the school I went to in ninth grade was already kind of rough. Yeah. And to be a skater in that environment was like you're you're just double marked. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so I would hide my skateboard in the bushes before school and then I would go find it after school and skate and, uh, <laughs> and if people saw me with it, they'd yell skater fag. Oh, but like wow. their words, not mine. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was dealing with in high well, that, school. I mean, that's how they, they <clears throat> talk back then too. Oh, like, for I sure, mean, yeah. That was like normal and it didn't mean no, but I mean it was, but it was also more like, you you still skate? Like, haven't you on grown up? Yeah, like grow up, dude. Like yeah. you're 14. <laughs> <laughs> or or was it, it was also you're 14. <laughs> it also changed when 16 came around and your buddies got a car. Yeah, and they're like, man, I don't really skate anymore much. You're like, why? And they're like, well, I drive everywhere now. And you're like, oh yeah, doesn't mean you have to stop skating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's been different, but uh, now with woodward and different parks and camps and everything did you ever did you go to did you ever go to any camps i did i went to visalia i went to visalia yeah. in 1993 it was sick yeah it was Vi fun yeah. man and the pig i was no i was there in 91 okay 90 or 91 yeah i was yeah. in 93 but it was i i paid to go there oh you like, did like i went yeah. there like as a kid like oh, okay. and i had that experience it was so much fun man yeah, like that's sick like and and then getting to go there again like when when you're a pro and like yeah. hang out with the kids and skate the skate the the, the place was just what well, it was such a surreal thing and, and the way we did it we would camp outside we wouldn't be with the and the cabins we we would have tents and stuff you set mean up when when you went as a pro yeah when we yeah, went yeah, as yeah, a yeah, pro we it was thing. rad we, we it was actually such stayed a fun in fresno experience. oh really yeah okay. and then we just drove there every day and, yeah. and skated like Fair weather friends, like, all right, see you guys. Have fun eating. <laughs> we're out here. Food. Yeah. We're gonna go to. We're hitting <laughs> Denny's. We're going to Denny's for sure. We went to Denny's. Yeah. Or if we were living large, Olive Garden. Oh, oh there yeah, you go. yeah. That was remember like that was that was going out fancy. We that are was, going out to yeah. dinner, fancy dinner, at Olive Garden. Yeah. <laughs> Eat all the breadsticks you can, oh, yeah. man, because they'll keep refilling yeah. them. <laughs> put them in, put in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the move The move we had at Olive Garden was to tell them it was someone's birthday because you get a free cake. Oh, yeah. Did, still doing that to the this day at places. <laughs> still. At Olive Garden, did they, they come and sing happy birthday to you? Yeah, they, they had a mini cake that they would bring to the table that you had to share with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we still do that. We were uh, during uh, Shark Week. Uh, we told everybody, we told the same restaurant three <laughs> nights in a row, it was Dark Shark's birthday, and they literally came out and did it. The third night, they were finally like, all right, guys, we're going to sing the song, but, uh, <laughs> we know it's up. come on, we're not stoked on it. <laughs> it's Dark Shark's birthday again. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's been good. Um. I know you got something else coming up today. We don't want to keep you too much from your time. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. See. You're good? You got a little time? Um, I do, yes. What was... I noticed... I never knew you had tattoos. Oh, yeah. Well, I've uh. had... I've had... Uh, I've had this one for a long time. Oh, uh, okay. The hawk. Hawk yeah. skull. The hawk nice. graphic. And then uh, yeah. <clears throat> I got this one, like... Oh, I don't know, about seven or eight years ago. Okay. So that's Dr. Wu. And then um, this is uh, Ray Underhill. You familiar with Ray Underhill? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah he passed. So he passed away, and then his daughter did. This is Ray signed a skateboard to me um, just before he passed away. He was he was sick for a long time. And uh, it, it got sun faded because I had it up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And so I managed to get the signature from it and then... Um, get a good copy of it so uh his daughter olivia did his signature this is this is her oh yeah. wow um, which is okay. super cool and then scott campbell who he's a very accomplished um tattoo artist he told me like if i'm good at anything i'm good at skulls so i brought this is ray's graphic yeah so that was ray's top graphic dude mm. that's so because it has his hat his ponytail his necklace 
Yeah. So yes, there you go. Those are my nice. tattoo stories. <laughs> nice. I got a I got a Bones <clears throat> Brigade tattoo. You do? Yeah. I got a Rodney Mullen was my first. Like after you get the after you do the Veriflex Kmart board. So you, is it the Rodney Mullen with the dog, the mutt? No, I didn't do. I didn't have that board. That mm. I, or or it's the with the crown. Yeah, I have the crown. Where is it? it? It's uh, right here. It's and it's actually. I mean, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lines, That's like so good. <clears throat> yeah. Ronnie Mullen, he's, dude, he's... He's the man. He's the man. He's the <laughs> Beatles. I tell people, like, <laughs> who's your favorite skater? It, Ronnie, yeah. of course. He's, he created all this stuff. Yeah. No, and it was crazy... <clears throat> I uh, I was like, okay, you know what? Skating's my life. Like that's in my first like after my Veriflex Walmart whatever back then. What, what, at what age did you start skating? I started skating around nine ten. Yeah. What about you? I started skating around like uh, when I was ten years old. Yeah. Yeah. Ten years old, and my first board was a uh, Christian Hisoi. Ooh, yeah. nice. Rocket hammerhead? Yeah, the hammerhead. <laughs> <Sick. laughs> it's so great. Mine was Rodney Mullen's freestyle board, and a friend had one, and I was gonna. Did buy you know it was a freestyle board? Yeah, I you knew did. it was freestyle board, and it had street style wheels. So I go, oh, I'm street skating because of this board. Did you have risers? No, straight 101s. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but uh, 101s. <laughs> 101. Uh, 101 Indies. Yeah, 101 Indies. Yeah. Like, uh, that's, yeah. that's a freestyle. Yeah, indie. and then Street Style Wheels. But I was going to buy the used one for like 60 bucks, and my dad just gave me 100 bucks for my birthday, and I'm like, I'm going to buy a brand new one. And it was my first like legit board that I bought. And I was doing board slides on a like double-sided curb on my freestyle board. That's amazing. Yeah. And I was like, I remember those days like vividly. And that I just was... shows how good you were at the time to be <laughs> riding that setup. Yeah. And doing like freestyle boards were not meant to be no. grinded or slid. Yeah. No, right? I was sliding. Yeah. And with no rails either. <clears throat> just wow. sliding on the board. And Is it because uh, of the width? Is that why you got it? Yeah. And it was smaller. Yeah. yeah. That's all what I was going to say. It's probably other... a normal board for like someone like yeah, us. It was it was because of the size. Because me. even when I, I, I became a pro and I was able to like kind of like shape my boards, my boards were always smaller. What about like, what about the minis though? They weren't small enough? Uh the minis the minis were actually, yeah, what my pro model would be. Mini okay. A mini board. But then like, you know, to sell to like the, the main yeah, sure. the, the mainstream you had a normal size one yeah. for everyone. Like, but I'm but saying like, like like Powell used to make the minis. I used to ride every mini board Powell okay. had. I rode minis. But uh, they started making those after Rodney's board though. So yeah. I get it. All right. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. And uh mm. but then companies started stop making them. And I'm like, what happened to the minis? You know, because boards were evolving right. and stuff. And uh, it was it was difficult. And I, I always said, if I'm ever going to, you know, make my own board, I'm making the mini. I'm uh -huh. bringing the mini back. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. What is that? How wide is that? No, that's uh, that's eight. That's a normal popsicle stick now. So, that's yeah. Sick, hey, when, when, uh, when you were talking about sponsor me t tapes, um, did Frankie Hill ever send you a sponsor me tape? You no, guys get it for the same team? Okay. He, he was on okay. Powell. So. Okay. He he actually uh, I don't have his whole backstory, but he lived near <clears throat> San Francisco, or Santa Barbara. He was one of my favorite skaters back oh, then. Oh, he was, like, he, was he was the first stuntman. <laughs> yeah, you know? dude, that's yeah. crazy. That part where at the end where it ends with him like yeah, dude, all the, in that gap with a, with a Japan Air. I was like, dude, that's still legendary. That's a large. Where gap, it's like dude. his body is still trying to catch up to his board because <laughs> yeah. it's going so fast. Yeah, like you didn't understand it back then. You're like, what is happening? So he was, he, from what I know, he lived near Santa Barbara, near the Powell factory. Mm. And so he was just always around. And then at some point, someone's like, look at that little kid. Jumping That's one of the things, too, things. though. Like, when you live by a skate park, especially in a, an iconic park like that, you become good really fast. Especially, even yeah. nowadays, you see it with, like, there's a skate park everywhere. Yeah. These kids are really good, quick. Oh, for sure. And, and also, just the company you keep, where if you're... If you're skating with really experienced skaters, your level will just shoot up like that so wow. quickly because you're watching them do it in real time, and it's it, to them it's easy. 
And it, it's cool too because even with the skateboard community, one of the things I miss is like <clears throat> we were all so supportive of each other. You know, we all pushed each other yeah. so hard. Like you can do it. You got this. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's the band of misfits. You know, they like that, the band of yeah, misfits. For sure. It's always I'm, what it is. It's the Motley Crew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know it's funny, just sitting and thinking about like the early days of Big Brother, how it was all based on, <clears throat> you know, sarcasm and kind of mean spirited stuff, but it was a family. Like it was. Yeah. And it was like, we all loved it anyway. It was the Riff Raff family that yeah. beat each other up, <laughs> but still loved each other. Like the dysfunctional family. It was. It was the most, it still is, the most dysfunctional family yeah. that somehow pulls it together. Is that like, where you had some of your first coverage? Yeah, my first, the first coverage That's I ever I first had, I had the cover of Big Brother. That's where I first yeah. saw Spike you. Jones yep. came to New York City, and I didn't know who he was. He didn't know who I was, but world just sent or big brother sent him up there and it was like 30 degrees out and i was like skating in the shirt and we were going to these legendary spots that we skated during the summer i was from jersey so you know and we met up with spike and we took him to these spots and we spent the day with them had a blast dude yep. and then a few months later I'm, I'm on the cover of it and it was just like what the hell dude <laughs> like this this is real, you know, like, yeah. you, and then that's when I saw that there was another little dude. That's when you were doing the same thing. Rick. Did Kossick, you know about him? Nope. Until the magazine came out. So Rick Kosick was doing the same thing with me down here in the South Bay because Mike Smith was flowing me boards. Oh, yeah. And he goes, I called this photographer. We're going to go I'll go out and shoot photos. And we're like, all right. And we went shot and Rick goes, I want to shoot photos with you for a day. And we shot photos, and then they're like, yeah, we're going to do an interview of you for Big Brother. <laughs> and then it, we had the combo interview. Oh, that's together, right. Yeah. And he was on the cover. Uh, that's so great. Yeah. It's, it's so And then, cool. but what's crazy is, and this was a weird part of the skate industry. Because of that, the skate industry kind of put this, like, battle between us. Oh, that's The sucks. media did. Yeah, the media <laughs> yeah. of skateboarding did. And we talk later and we're like, it never happened where like Eric Costin and Rick Howard had to battle. You know, they're the well, same. No, it, yeah. it, it, uh, what, what it was, it was like every interview I ever got and, and every interview he ever got, yeah. there was always the question, so who's better, you or we, man? You know? yeah, and, so and, and so yeah. I didn't even know who so, he was. And yeah, it kind of created this rivalry that like... Wasn't there a, 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 a Brazilian dude around that time too? I don't, know. I don't know what the you got, you guys got to do that that has like shorter legs and he's fucking he, yeah he's he's that dude is amputated. like on another level of skateboard his, his legs are amputated he uh, he's, he got, he's so no, he's the gnarliest dude he got ran over by a train dude. yeah wait what yeah yeah that wasn't like he wasn't born that no, way no he got ran over by a train <clears throat> as a kid on a dare he, he he was dared to to jump onto a train as it was moving. And then whatever the the wind shear sucked him under, mm. and then all of his friends left. Damn! It left him there without his legs. And that is so insane. His sister just happened to be coming by because I guess that was on their way home. Yeah. And his sister found him laying there. Wow! So with his legs severed. That's gnarly. Did he <clears throat> skateboard before that, and then no. that happened? No, he got he uh, he got a skateboard for transportation. Because oh, they tried to give him, they tried to give smart, him, um, they tried to give him prosthetics, but they were all clunky and terrible. And then they gave him some sort of like, almost like a uh, wagon dolly, like a like dolly. a dolly thing, yeah. yeah. And then he's like, "This sucks." And then he saw someone skating, and asked for a skateboard. And then he got, he's like, "Oh, this is way better because they can get through doorways and, and everything else." And then one day he was skating by a skate park, and he saw people skating. He's like, "I didn't even know that's what these are for." I thought these were just to get around. And so then he started going to the skate park and then started getting hurt a lot. And his, his mom was worried, but he just stuck with it. Damn. Wow. <clears throat> so when he... Felipe Nunez, you're talking yeah. about, just so everyone yeah. knows. When, when, when he skateboards, is there some kind of pads on his legs? Because, no, I mean, it's just, gnarly. He tucks, he tucks his uh, pants over him and just goes. He's <laughs> Dude, I've seen him get so broke off that it's frightening and he, he just keeps going. <laughs> I feel like nowadays it's so hard 
I mean, maybe it was back then and, and you just weren't thinking about it. I think it's hard to become a pro skateboarder nowadays. Way harder. This right? A, Way. Right? Yeah, the, 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 such a bigger field. And so much more competition. And how do you stand out? Unless you're competing. Unless you're a like, little person. Yeah. <laughs> no, but even there's some nope. dude, little person. His name is Pitar Stewart or something. And he's dude. from like, it, he's like Italian or French. That's what I'm thinking of. Yes. That's what I'm thinking of. He's, he's, he's yeah. fucking good, dude. He's still I thought now. he was from Brazil. And he skates really fast. Yeah. He's, he's <clears throat> great. Yeah. But he's not pro. And his right. boards, he has like mini boards. Really? Like I've seen it because I'm like. So these. what? what is uh, what's your wheelbase? Mine's 14. 14. The board you ride is yeah, 14. My, this yeah. is the actual board okay. I ride. Mine's 14. What was yours, you know? I think mine must have been like 12 or something. Yeah. It was shorter. I needed it to be shorter because there was a point where I was like, I couldn't figure out 360 flips for a, for a long time. I like I, st I started doing 360 flips later on in my career. And the reason that was- On is flat my, or down stuff? Uh, on flat and down stuff. Uh -huh. But it was- I'm like I need I, I think it's because my legs are so short, and and so I I got a board made that was like yeah, smaller that was proportional and I figured it out. I'm like yeah. this this is it this is right. it like because me doing a 360 flip on a bigger size board is like me doing a three uh, or like someone doing a 360 flip on like a, a skim board like it's yeah. just huge you right. know so that that made it easier but like I was always like damn I. That was one of my favorite tricks, and I'm like, I wish I learned this so long ago. Because <laughs> yeah. people were doing that for a long, a, a long time ago, 360 flips. Simon Woodstock did it on a skimboard. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> Simon Woodstock doing it on a skimboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Simon Woodstock doing it on a skimboard is like us you know, doing it once or twice. But yeah. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to keep yeah, the wheel moving here. Did Simon Woodstock have grip tape on the skimboard? I think so. I think he did. That's I think he gnarly. made everything into a skateboard. So. Yeah. At one point, he, he had a bowling ball skateboard. <laughs> yeah fish tank trucks and wheels on a bowling ball yeah <laughs> um do you guys get uh a lot of messages or of, of other people that are like i didn't think i could skate and i saw you and um there was a comedian i went to a comedy show at a skate shop record shop that poncho did and it was skaters doing comedy yeah and a guy was a little bit like a short dude you mm -hmm. know but average and he's like yeah and i'm like and he was kind of like holding off on his comedy. I'm like, hey, how come we're in a skate shop? Every kind of lot of skaters in here, and the only two pros are midgets. <laughs> and he's like, what? Uh, uh, uh. And then he, he even said, he goes, yeah. You know, being a shorter guy, I didn't think I could do rails and stuff like that. But no, then you but guys came out, and you're doing rails and stuff. And he's like, well, I have no excuse now. <laughs> well, he also what, said, what uh, you, compliment. Yeah. he also said, you stumped me. No yeah. offense. Yeah. Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> you stopped me. Stumped. No, stumped me. Like a stump. stump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Comedy. Yeah, comedy. So your, your 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 buddy your your podcast buddy Jason Ellis. Yeah. Have, have you ever gone and watched his stand? -up? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, I've never watched yeah. it, and I really want to. I've heard good th things about it. Like he he yeah, leaves I it mean, all he, on the he, stage. He leaves it all out there. Yeah, and and I've seen it go both ways for him. <laughs> oh really? Like <laughs> yeah. like both yeah. ways? Like literally in, in just too. silent yeah. or <laughs> what's that? Both yeah, ways or just uncomfortable. <laughs> You know, just like, oh. I think to be a good stand-up comedian, you have to bomb. You yeah. have to know what that yeah. feels like. Yeah. We're talking about the Hawk and Ellis show. Yes. Hawk versus Wolf. Yeah. The Hawk oh, Hawk yeah. versus Wolf. There we go. Yeah, it's not, I knew it wasn't Ellis. I'm like, Why? they don't call it Ellis. Hawk versus Wolf. Nice. Yeah, you guys should come on. I'm we'll down. We do. Yeah. We did in Santa Monica um, when I'm in town, so. Okay. We'll How do often it. do you guys shoot a bunch in, in a day? We try to just I we have a studio at my ramp, um, but that's usually just Jason and I kind of shooting the shit on our own. It's hard to get like LA celebrity guests to come to Vista, <laughs> you know. <laughs> to, to, you we're know the do a drive. podcast behind the ramp. Like, <laughs> that, that's, you know the drive. <laughs> that's a tall order. So I try to come up um, to the, the studio up here and, and bang out like three or four in a day. But we are going to do it soon with Heath. So if you guys would come on that day, that'd be amazing. All right. Yeah. Let me I know. would love to, dude. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm actually, uh, and I don't know when you guys, oh, you guys are releasing this pretty soon. I'm, I'm working on what's going to be my last video. 
And so like a, been, a documentary? No, like no, no, like video skate part? video, like Full video part. part. Dude, your your People video say part, but yeah. what is it part of? That's true. You know, yeah, <laughs> your video. You're, it's part of the internet. I guess. Your documentary <laughs> was so inspiring. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it, man. Man, Thank very you. inspiring. But you're talking about so I'm working on uh, what will be my last video part because I was I was working on that before I got hurt, and after my injury and after my 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 failed recovery. I just forgot about it. And then now that I'm sort of back to the skating level I was at before I got hurt, I went to revisit what I've shot and I've shot most of it already. Oh, that's great. So now I'm, I'm just adding a few extra things to it. It's probably going to be out in November. Um, and so that's been really cathartic for me because I don't, I don't know what's next. You know what I mean? But, but I like having this closure. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. And now when you say video part, is it because you got birdhouses coming out with a video? That just We just say video part. That's what it <laughs> says. Yeah. I don't know why we say that. He's just coming out with his own video. Because Gosh. because usually, yeah, it's part of a team video. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. Right. Like, but, but there's now, video parts, guys, like right, but, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a team video. In a team yeah. video. But, but nowadays, like you could just have your, your oh, own video released on Thrasher. Yeah, but you could do it yourself. Stuck in that, you just in do that it mode, yourself. like, yeah. what's a video part? Yeah. Like, well, yep. so Birdhouse is coming out with a video. No, it's just oh. me. Just oh, cool. Birdman's it's coming just out with a video. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I would love for Birdhouse to as well. Um, and there are Birdhouse writers that have dropped some parts, yeah. some some videos. Let's just say videos. <laughs> yeah, they have dropped their own videos recently. So I'll be dropping my own video here in November. I mean that 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 is still around though. Teams having video parts. Yeah, yeah, there are. Yeah, I remember. It's rare. You think it's changed, like, in a sense of, like, uh, I used to really look forward, like, I still do, but do you think kids look forward to other, like, pro skaters' parts? I think yeah. Like, how they yeah. used to? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. because yeah. Just because they're seeing so much stuff on social media. Yeah, right. yeah. And, and they're doing it right, too. I mean, like, Thrasher will hold some crazy NBD until the video drops and then put it on the cover, so... They know they understand that synergy and that excitement, and so that that's definitely a thing. So. Do you do you have a favorite street skateboarder, like from back in the day, and then one now? Oh wow, that's tricky. I mean, Gons was. He, oh yeah, he, I was gonna say he, Gons he wore the crown, and he he influenced me just in my own skating. Yeah. In terms of what to do on vert, like he ripped at vert too. So we would watch him skate vert, like yeah. dude, how, you can twist like that. Like wow. let's do it. That's amazing, um, and. Uh, these days, uh, there's just there's so much talent. I'm, I'm, it's crazy. And I think that crazy. your video game has inspired people to, like, do, do tricks, tricks that, like, do yeah, tricks that, like, you never, yeah. like, I remember playing Tony yeah. Hawk and then doing, like, backside tail slide, ba fakey manual to fakey kick flip. Right. And people weren't doing that, but now people now are. Doing, yeah, yeah. I've, I've actually gnarly. had a conversation with people where I say, you know, if you look at the era, and, I, and a lot of times I point to Shane O'Neill. Yeah, because Shane O'Neill grew up playing THPS, Hunt, yeah. and then now he does combos that were only actually possible in our game. And what people don't understand is like, like people that play the video game that aren't skateboarders, those tricks are fucking really, really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're hard enough doing it with your yeah. thumbs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, that it, I think that I'm just more amazed. And if I had to, you know, one of my favorite street skaters it, it, who um, luckily has, has made a, a great comeback is uh, Ben Rayborn because he really had a unique style, a unique take, and, and could skate transition, but mm -hmm. also just his street skating was gnarly. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just, but I'm a fan, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it's, I hate the whole apples to oranges of, trying to choose who's best. Or oh, who's yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I just, I love all of that. You I'm should just, know that punch. <laughs> no, but, 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 it was but, a you, good but you definitely no, have I know. I'm just legit, legit favorite favorites for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like my all time favorite street skater is Guy Mariano. There you go. And I'm not saying it, it, it's just, he, he, yeah. he was just always great. His video parts were always on another level yeah. that like people are, it's going to take years to get yeah. to that level. But I think that's, it, it, that's just me. Based on that, I'd say my favorite street skater and you call it what you will is, is my son Riley because oh my god he Jeez. at some point when at some point in his skate career or his his journey of skating you know I would teach him stuff and and he would watch videos and things and then at, at some point he started asking me how to do certain tricks and I was like 
Riley, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he one day asked me, he goes, Dad, can you, how do I do a, a frontside kickflip to tail slide? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then he learned it on a, on a little hubba. Wow. Like over a pyramid. And I was like, well, you learned it. You know Does, what I mean? And um, then watching him progress all that. And he has really, like, I, I identify with his sort of unique approach to certain tricks or, or to try to make things creative. Yeah. And I appreciate that. So it's like I get to watch that and sort of, like, projection watch it. So it, it's, it's one of my favorite things. That's awesome that you said Riley Hawk, man. He's, he's great. It's good. Yeah, and like I said, I, I see a lot of my mindset in him, but I'm and I'm just in awe of his skill set for street skating. Is is he the only one of your children that skateboards? They all skate. Oh, yeah, really? they're, and they're all good in their own right. Like they all have their strengths. Um, and between my wife and I, we have we have six uh, kids, five boys, all five hardcore skaters. Really, one at one has a skate shop here, West Hollywood. Miles has a um, Sapazi. Miles is rad. I like Miles. That's pretty cool, um, man. And you were never the like coach style dad, which was rad. You just you yeah, they had I mean, skating I, in their blood, but they picked it up on their own. And absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I think it was more because they're homie skate. Yeah, but it is funny the dynamic of our household where I'll be, they'll all be like in the TV room and the kitchen's right there, and I'll be getting something in the kitchen, and I hear them arguing about like the origins of a trick, <laughs> and I'm like, you guys, I. Got, Tell you right here <laughs> where got the answers, yep. where, and they're just like, like <laughs> they want to figure it out yeah. on their own. Yeah, sure, old man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's always cool, like with like with the skaters nowadays or the younger generation. They like, I think they need to watch like a video, like blind video days, or or, yeah. or you know, just the questionable video, like things that like we came up on. Because, you know, it, it shows, like, the history and, like, the progression, and that's what it's all about, you know? Like, and and what, a, what a huge deal some of those tricks and stunts were at the time. <sighs> they still hold up, but what, how, how truly next level they were at that time. Yeah. Like, it's wild. Yeah. Well, cool. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for doing it. It was so awesome to have you on the <laughs> it show. It was the best. Yeah. Get um, you guys on, on, on Hawk vs. Wolf. We yeah. will be. It'll be Hawk versus Wolf versus Ponch versus We. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you guys are going to win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to thank Def Noodle for having us. Thank you, Def Noodle. The location's lovely. We love thank, this place. Thank Midgies. Oh, thank Midgies, all, of course. And we have a first sponsor. Uh, Nima... Club Med. Oh. <laughs> Club Med? No, no. They wouldn't sponsor us. I wish. No, just kidding. Uh, Nima uh, supplements. I take one a day. They're all natural. That's why I got to come in here and kick butt with these dudes. <laughs> and if you want to get some and get 15% off, go to Nima.com and enter L I L little rev and you'll get some. Little rev. Little rev. Thanks. Awesome, dude. Thanks for coming Thanks, out, you Tony. Thank you, Tony. It was awesome. It was yeah. Phew.